Hello everyone, this is Shamsi and welcome to the Triscanner Guide. Today we'll take a more in-depth look at the building and operating of this ship here, the Triscanner, that we mentioned briefly on the Mining Millions tutorial. I also want to quickly thank everyone who's been subscribing to me on YouTube. I have again, thanks to your support, surpassed my next giveaway goal very quickly. And so I'm going to be drawing this ship here, the Zambarak, live on Twitch this evening on the 5th of November, the Night of Gunpowder, Treason and Plot. So if you want to be in with a chance of winning this, you'll probably have a few hours from when this video goes live to head over to the Discord, which is in the description below, and uh, type any message you like into the Zambarak giveaway channel there. I'm also going to be doing something special for the next giveaway. On Saturday the 7th of November, I'm going to be uh, building and giving away a ship live on Twitch to one of the viewers who will be there that evening. So if you want to be in with a chance of winning uh, the next ship, uh, do tune in to the live stream on Twitch from again around 7.30 p.m. London time on Saturday the 7th of November. You'll find a link to that down in the description where you'll also find timestamps to this video if you want to skip ahead to any part. So let's get straight to it then. Uh, don't worry about the honeycomb. Uh, you can use whatever honeycomb you want. Uh, I'd originally uh, built a ship like this with kind of satellite pyramids out uh, supporting the scanners connected by a filament of energy. I had seen this design at the Zenith Expo on the pod racer. I thought it looked incredible, so I've incorporated it here. Um, I think it looks good. Um, the whole point of the honeycomb for me is to make a ship look good and feel good to fly. It uh, adds cross-section and weight to the ship, but uh, that's okay. I will however also say, given that it's made out of lithium, it has no hit points really it uh, has incredibly low weight which is what i wanted but the flip side to that is no hit points and terrible resistances so do um bear in mind that this is an atmospheric pve ship only if you are in a planet where someone can shoot you one shot will kill you in this ship it provides no protection at all but bear in mind the safe zone is staying and currently without atmospheric pvp in the game the actual surface of any planet is also a safe zone so um you know go out and scan exotic worlds in the outer rim while uh, you can't be shot at uh, on this ship all you'd have to do is warp there deploy this ship and scan away right so um i'm gonna so i'd originally had the um pyramids out to this side then uh, a subscriber of mine warlockery came up to the base with his scanner ship and I'm going to put some footage of it on the screen right now. And he had this really interesting idea of having this uh, front scanners being out to each side and then the rear scanner being a single scanner at the back. So we're going to go with that as our, um, let's say, variant B for our scanner ship. The benchmarks we are head uh, heading for are, are roughly these. Um, again, if you want to not use lithium, if you want to use a cheaper honeycomb, if your ship is going to weigh more, but that's okay so long as you hit these performance benchmarks. And again, bear in mind, I have very well developed piloting talents on this character now, and so you might need more elements than what I'm using to hit these benchmarks, and so you'll have to finagle things a bit to, to hit the right performance. Um, so the benchmarks we're going for are max thrust, at about say 2.2 G's, 2.1 G's. Max brake force, anything above 5.5. Max speed, uh, this is respectable for how big the ship is and given that there's scanners on it. Low altitude lift, I want over say 2.2 G's. And high altitude lift, anything above say 1.8 is enough, but don't worry too much about the sustenation speed. When you put scanners out and build weird shapes like a pyramid here, the sustenation speed uh, kind of doesn't get accurately portrayed. So even though this says 639, I'm taking off in, in test flights at somewhere around 200, 220. So uh, don't let this figure throw you or make itself seem more oppressive than it really should. Okay. With that out of the way, let's get those benchmarks met. And I'm going to start with my uh, atmospheric thrust. And so I need my engines. And we're not going to use military engines uh, for once. We're going to use maneuver engines. And let me explain why. 
With atmospheric engines, the maneuvering variant uses as much fuel as the military variant, but it provides much less thrust than the military variant. Its advantage is here in the warm-up time. With my talents the way they are, I can warm this engine up to max in 2 to 1 a bit seconds. It is incredibly quick to get moving, and when we are fine-tuning our placement to where we want to be to scan, we are basically going to be pulsing our engines towards the end. And so if they take forever to spool up, we'll take forever to get to where we want to be. But with maneuver engines, that process of fine maneuvering becomes very easy. And the reason why we oversubscribe each performance benchmark of the ship to make it perform much better than really what it needs to is again to increase our maneuverability. So let's get going. We're going to start with maneuver engines. I'm going to need three of them to hit the performance benchmarks that I need. So let me just line them up roughly by eye here. I'll place them under each of these satellite pyramids. Again, you can place them wherever and however you like. Um, again, the end game of this world for me is building. It's designing, making ships, building Lego and Minecraft and all of that jazz for now. There will be PvP and all sorts of other fun things coming. But for now, um, it's all about building and designing for me. So... There is our three engines placed, and oh, I forgot to do one thing. We are going to, we've already placed our territory scanners out in order for their weight to be counted. Uh, let us next place our container with the cargo we need this ship to carry. So I'm gonna line it up at the, at the top here. There we go, that's roughly the middle, and then sink it down until it can't be seen anymore. There we go. Now, what we need this to be able to carry, if you cast your minds back to the Mining Millions tutorial, is 10 large containers and a container hub to link them all together. A dynamic core to be able to deploy the containers. And let's say you, you're carrying one territory scanner in your inventory, uh, but you say you also want to carry a spare in the container, we'll make provision for that as well. And then when we do that, we'll see that our max thrust is now, uh, it'll end somewhere around 2.5. So, that's max thrust done. Uh, ooh, I had some obstructed wings here placed from before. Um, next, let's go for our low altitude lift, and I'm going to place a hover engine large, at each uh, extreme corner of the underside here. And I'm going to make sure they don't stick out at all. In fact, are sticking in just a little bit. There we go. We are severely oversubscribing to this, especially given that I have an extra 40% max height at which the engines kick in. So I could technically afford to have less, but I like to have more to make the ship more easy to fly especially in mountainous areas where it is difficult to maneuver and control and we'll do our test flight in, in an area like that as well in a little bit right so that is our low altitude lift and that'll end somewhere close to 2.5 although we are putting most of the heavy things out now uh, next is our high altitude lift we're going to go for an extra small wingspan and to do that, we need to rotate it down twice and then figure out somewhere unobstructed to place them, probably immediately to the left of the hover engine here. Is that unobstructed? Yeah, it should be okay. Right. Maybe go up one. There we go. So, please don't ask me why this works. It really shouldn't, but it does for now. And uh, we're going to make the most of it to uh, have our pyramids better be able to fly. Um, except uh, placing wings like this does kind of make it difficult to um, uh, go down 
pitch your nose down, so adjust your altitude moving down, but it's still good enough. And basically what we're doing is placing uh, wings like this until we um, hit about 1.1, 1.2 Gs. Hopefully we'll have enough room here of um, high atmospheric lift. Don't worry about obstructions, they will clear, and when they do crop up, they are very minor. Coming up on 1G, yeah, we'll basically take it all the way to the door, yeah, 1.12, that should be enough for now. As you can see from my airfoils list, none of them are obstructed. They really ought to be, I don't know why this works, but it does, so let's make the most of it. And then basically um, repeat the process for the other side. Sometimes you can place them apart every two spaces. Sometimes it has to be three. As long as we hit our goal of a little over one, uh, two Gs, sorry, of high altitude lift, all will be well. Okay, let's go for 2.2 here. All right, that should be fine. Now, again, the obstructions will clear. Just give them a moment, and when they do crop up, they are well within acceptable parameters here, 10%. No big deal. Right, now, let's place our vertical stabilizers. Um, we're going to go for smalls uh, so that we can have extra power. How do I want to place these? Yeah. Let's move that out a little bit. There we go. All right. And then the next one. And there we go. So again, we have severely overpowered vertical stabilizers, but that's just going to make it easiest for, uh, easier for us to fly. So we're going to be okay with that. Now we're going to go for fuel tanks and our maneuver engines are incredibly fuel hungry. So we're uh, going to place three medium engines, uh, sorry, medium fuel tanks, one for every engine. And we're going to put a small one here out for the um, hover engines because we don't want to smash into the ground if we run out of fuel. So let's connect all of that up. Okay, next is our air brakes. We're going to place three of them down somewhere out of the way here. Our air brakes still cannot be obstructed. Uh, that will be fixed at some point, but for now, uh, we'll place them on the inside here. And then we'll see that we've hit our benchmark. So our brake force is close to 7 Gs, fantastic. Uh, max thrust, 2.61, amazing. Low altitude lift, 2.7, great. Uh, sustenation speed, again, don't worry about that. It'll be much less than that, but high altitude lift, it's 2.13. All very good news for us. Then let us put in our command seat. Uh, we'll go for a hovercraft seat. Oh no, those are not aligned. I shall have to replace them. Right, then we need our data bank for our Lua script. And we need our adjusters to be able to maneuver sh the ship. And we're going to go for a large adjuster pointing up and down at pretty much every extremity of the pyramid. Oh, a little bit of an obstruction here. That's okay, though. It's only honeycomb. It can be placed over. There we go. And so, yeah, we're able to turn. Right, I'm going to fuel the ship up. Uh, oh, let's load our Lua script first. There 
Okay. And set our control scheme and everything else that we want to change. So we're on keyboard. We want max pitch to be 35, landing rate to be 40, and we want our auto takeoff to be 2,500. Target hover height, let's increase it a bit. And that should do. All right, I'm gonna fuel up the ship, and so I'll be right back. All right, the ship is all fueled up. I've put a resurrection pad down for emergencies. Uh, let's see how the ship flies. Okay, how does it turn? Okay, no issues. How does it pitch? Nicely. How does it roll? Well enough. Obviously you could place the adjusters better, but I like them this way. Right, so, following Warlockery's design, this is the front of the ship with the, the two scanners. So let's uh, pick somewhere where we can fly to. Uh, let's go down here to a mountainy place. Let's say we want to scan these three tiles. Pretty much worst case scenario for for scanning. And I want you to pay attention to a couple of things as we take off. Up here um, and over here. I want you to see how quickly we take off. So when our rate of climb goes up, what speed we are at at the time. And also... I want you to pay attention to how quickly the engines spool up. They're already at max power. I'm gonna disengage my brakes. And yeah, we're we're at about 220 when it started to take off properly. So as you can see, we're flying quite nicely with if I turn on the force indicators with my vertical stabilizers here the ship turns very uh, in a very responsive manner if i turn on cruise control and see can i hit 800 let's see if we can hit 800 kilometers per hour fully laden as you can see here our wings are functioning perfectly well no issues and yeah we're gonna hit you know 800 kilometers per hour cruising speed while carrying everything we want to carry. Not bad at all. So I'm going to get rid of my altitude hold. We're going to pitch our nose down a bit to um, reduce altitude. Turn on grid view for fine movements. Let's put our brakes on now and land. As you can see, we can stop very quickly and then if you don't have the Arcadia Demacia script you would just manually break land and here is how our hovers are helping us we are able to fly and maneuver in very rocky unpleasant conditions here and so this is what I want to scan right in front of me so I can see that the two uh, tiles here are right in front of me. And so this third tile is the one I'm in. I want to leave this back scanner in the tile I'm in and fit these two in the front tile. The way I'm going to do that is to keep my air brakes pressed and pulse my engines a little bit. So throttle up. They are already at max power and I'm moving. And I'm just going to fine-tune my movements. So there is the exact corner. Let's get to the exact corner of the tile. Yeah. Move forward a little bit. Now, obviously you could do all of this with a maneuver tool. And in some ways it'll be quicker. I didn't have a fantastic approach at this. But uh, the way you would do it with a ship that's capable of being maneuvered the way this ship is... It's simply just to fly to where you want to be, quickly lock the ship in place with a uh, maneuver tool, and then start scanning. So, when I land here, uh, the ship is probably going to move because uh, it's 
Oh, no, it was fine. But regardless of whether the ship moves or not, you want to lock it in place with a maneuver tool by clicking on it and then clicking off of it because territory scanners will abort if there is even the tiniest bit of movement. Sometimes those micro vibrations that ships have when you land them are enough to throw these off. So you always, after you get off, you want to click on, click off, and there we go. And here we have one territory scanner in this tile, one territory, uh, one territory scanner in this tile, and one in the original tile that we were in, which is exactly what we wanted now. Suppose we have scanned these tiles and now we want to go scan these tiles here. So we uh, set our destination, get into our cockpit again, and we don't really want to take off. And part of the fuel hungry nature of this ship is how much we're going to fly with our um, air brakes engaged, especially given what's in front of us, this hilly mountainous bit, we want to basically hover as much as we can. So let us move forward a bit, tilt our nose up, trust in our hover engines to keep us up. Our engines spooled up to max power very quickly, but um, we don't want to rely on them yet. We're going to keep our air brakes engaged. We are moving at a uh, fast enough rate for my liking at least while we clear the obstacles and there we go disengage brakes and as you can see even before 200 kilometers per hour our wings were keeping us up we were not heading down but i'm uh, gonna cut my engines now start brake landing and then maneuver the ship to where I want it to be. Again, we are not exactly where we want to be. We kind of want to be a little bit forward and um, turned around. So we're going to pulse our engines. And you see, I'm moving straight away. If these were military engines, that would take you know four or five seconds to move every time you want to pulse your engines to adjust location which you know gets a bit tiring and that's the main advantage of maneuver engines here for me they get you moving super fast so uh, we're roughly where we want to be just want to pulse a little bit back this way there we go now we have one territory scanner in this tile, one in this tile, one in this tile. Please do not poke fun of how I mangle the word territory from time to time. Right, so we get off, take our maneuver tool, click once, click once again to stop the ship moving. One in this tile, one in this tile. And uh, this isn't exactly right, but again, no problem. We just take our maneuver tool get somewhere where we can move it from and there we go one in this tile one in this tile and one in this tile and there we have it the uh, black pyramid of Scanar it's uh, an interesting ship as I've said multiple times now much more powerful than really what it needs to be but that's okay There we go. Absolutely no issues clearing that mountain. We were taking off at around 250. So don't worry about what the sustenation speed is saying that it is in the report. Our wings are able to carry us at a much lower speed than what that indicates. So obviously you can just park your own ship, normal ship that you fly and put scanners out on it. You can put down a dynamic construct blueprint with basically just a frame and three scanners that you put down when you need and pick up when you're done with. But with a ship like this, it's very easy to simply fly from point to point and scan. It makes it much um, quicker to my mind. It also makes it much less bother bothersome because you're not always going in and out of build mode to place things and then take them off. You're not worrying about any flight elements being obstructed or, or whatever. And this is an okay ship in my estimation in terms of um, aesthetics as well. 
Uh, it's not a, an element ship, although I don't have any issue with element ships at all. I wanted to, to, to double down on the pyramid theme. So, yeah, I like it. And I hope if you copy the design, you'll like it too. And I also hope that it will help you find many a um, super node. Can I recover from this? Yes! Super maneuverable. I crashed into my own pyramid and I recovered. Nice. I love the um, inertia matrix of this ship and the, the power of the... I can probably improve the adjuster placement quite a bit, actually, but I like it. And as you can see, I'm already moving. <laughs> I, as soon as I spool my engines up, a second or so delay and I'm moving. It's very nice. So that is the Black Pyramid of Scanar, as a Twitch viewer named it. Um, the other day. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do consider liking the video and subscribing as well. It is a huge help for a channel as new as mine when anyone does that. So thank you to all of you who have been. Thank you for watching. I hope you find many super nodes. Until the next time, bye for now.